Welcome to Garage Garage Special Vehicles Unit. This is where we're going to be building some stuff that's outside of the general scope of traditional garage garage builds. For this project in particular, we're trying to achieve the impossible and qualify for X Games. Hold up. Wait a minute. Now, that sounds completely f***ing ridiculous. And you know what? It is. Here's how we intend to do that. So X Games is holding an open qualifier for their hooligan flat track racing class in just a few days. And it's right here in LA. If you don't know what hooligan racing is, it's basically this. It's essentially a run what you brung competition with a 750cc or greater motorcycle with two cylinders and zero front brakes. So we're gonna build our own Harley Davidson flat right here in house. And since we only got about three days to finish the build, I'm enlisting the help of some friends, uh, one of which you guys may be familiar with, Mr. Ryan Kibbe. This year the X Games has flat tracking racing and uh, they were like, you guys should come out to it and we were gonna have Zach go, but then we were like, uh, Zach's gonna <laughs> definitely break his hip. So Kibbe rides motorcycles and we were like, let's have Kibbe do it. And he actually said, yeah. Because so, I'm expendable. If he doesn't get hurt, then you guys lose. Yeah, you don't have a business to do that here. Yeah, so since we recently kind of lost Dan to an ankle injury. Oh my God! Uh, we can't really lose any more hosts. So unfortunately, I get kind of pulled out of the mix here. But Kibby is more than capable of damaging himself and not ruining any of our content. <laughs> so thanks. here's Thank what you. we'll be building. Yeah, so this is a pretty much bone stock, a 1999 Sportster 1200S. It's not a bad bike to start with. I mean, it's like, dude, it's is cherry. It this is, yeah, it's fully it's got stock. external racy stuff. Yeah, that's, with, that's. With clickers, Compression yeah. adjustment? It's got on the front end too. Mm -hmm. Whatever, I like yeah. setting them up different. Dual disc. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lose all of these cherry tins because uh, they'll just wind up getting destroyed anyway. We're gonna go with a smaller tank. We've gone to Saddleman and we're gonna go pick up one of their uh, tracker tail sections. We're gonna cut the rear fender struts off. We're gonna swap out the rear shocks, do a chain conversion kit. We're also gonna do an SNS engine kit. Uh, they're one of their hooligan kits, so it's like new cams, pistons, jugs, all that good stuff. We're gonna up the tire size in the rear to a 19 that'll match the front. And we are gonna go no brakes in the front. We're also gonna ditch the headlight, gauges. Our friends from Track or Die are gonna come out and help with this so we can get it done because we have exactly three days to complete this. We should probably get started. Okay, so fun teaching moment here. If you're gonna, if you know you're gonna be taking your tank off your motorcycle, run it empty because draining it sucks. Is it empty? No, it's almost full. Cut it. Okay, that works. I'm being extra careful with this plastic parts, especially oh, on your old fuel system. All right, so basically what I'm seeing is you guys are taking a bunch of off. Yeah, that's it. Yeah with not really much rhyme or reason. Uh, no, uh, here's the rhyme and the reason. We don't need any of it. Most of it is just crap to make it either street legal or, you know, safe. And we don't need to be either of those. <laughs> so we're just getting rid of it.
keep these on for now so we can roll this thing around. What uh? So what do you? What's the problem you running into right now? Oh, uh, well, all the plugs like for the switch housings and stuff run into the headlight bezel. So as you can see, all this stuff doesn't really go through a hole like that unless you take all these uh, Deutsch connectors apart, which I really don't feel like doing. So I'm probably just going to cut this open so I can get rid of this headlight bezel. Taking all those apart, and you got your favorite shape out of it. Rocket cover. It's also the mount for the rear master cylinder and brake pedal. So the stuff that we've ripped off so far. Now, the only things that we're gonna rip off and keep are the carb intake heads. That may be it. Carb. Science. Science. When in doubt, hit it with a hammer. All right, so here's where we got to today with Mr. Kibby Tech. So uh, in a few hours, uh, my buddies from Tracker Die are gonna get here. We're gonna take and uh, knock out a few more pieces. They're bringing a bunch of parts for this bike because they've had a bunch of stuff sitting around their shop. Uh, so we'll make a little more progress on this. I mean, we'll see where we get to at the end of the night. It's probably going to be a late one, so. Yeah, man. Hopefully be ripping some wheelies by Friday. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. Testing on Saturday. Hell, yeah, bro. You go, uh, you go home. All right, so we're back at it. It's eight o'clock now. Actually, it's nine. 9.45. Okay, it's 9.45. We're <laughs> getting back in the mix. And our bros from Tracker Die showed up with a handful of parts. What up? What's up, guys? Please introduce yourselves to the people. Corey from Tracker Die. Steve. And uh, we're gonna build a bike. Hell yeah. So, Corey and Steve were kind enough to not only bring some parts, but a lift. So, you know, we're gonna be professionals for a minute here. Gonna try. <laughs> so we've got a couple things and uh, this is gonna help bring our bike to what we need to get down here. And I tell you what, I'll let you kind of explain what you got here. This is one of the big things, huge for off-roading your Sportster. Here's stock, cast aluminum. This is your sprocket cover. So front sprocket here, this guy help. Bam, nice. would be under this. So this covers it, keeps your leg from getting sucked in there, all that good stuff. But, they're weak here, the second your bike falls over, brakes. So, we make a CNC version out of a billet, 7075, nice and strong, hefty, uh, looks a lot better too. So that's everything for that. And then we have a chain conversion kit, which is all the rage these days. Going to, uh, you know, help you put that power to the ground and adjust your ratios and really be able to fine tune what you're wanting to do. And we also got this smaller peanut tank. So here's the difference. And honestly, I, I didn't even know when they're like, yo, you should get the small peanut tank. And I thought that this was just the peanut tank because that's what- <laughs> Not the peanut tank. Yeah, that is the peanut tank. And you can see when they're side by side, just how much smaller that is. We're not gonna need a bunch of gas to run. And plus it'll look really cool with this, uh, this saddleman tail section when we get it all on. So we're gonna change this belt drive out. Probably get the top end of this engine off and then we'll call it a day. You guys cool with that? Oh, we got a wheel too. Uh, oh yeah, we Even got the better. rear. So this is going on the rear. So right now, obviously we got a 16 inch rear. Roll that thing up in front of us. We got a 19 inch rear going on there. Yeah. Race tires are only available on 19 inch, so. You either have to run spokes 
or convert mag. So that's a front wheel converted to a rear. Nice enough. Somebody like is just kind of doing this from home. They're like finding parts at like the swap meter Craigslist. How do you convert this? Cause this looks like you got like some sort this of spacer. This is something that we didn't make this kit, but the gentleman who did make this kit isn't really making them anymore. So we are gonna kind of take over and start offering our own. So that'll be something that's coming a little bit later down the line, but basically it's bolts on, makes it the same dimensions as a stock rear hub, and then has new bearings in it, and she's all good to go. Cool. What the f This bad boy, custom made by Steven. Nicely done, sir. On a Dyna, it has a long main shaft that you need the deep socket for. On a Sportster, not so bad. But it's an inch and three quarter mm -hmm. socket, which is pretty hefty. Not everybody has that in their toolbox anyway. But this is the guy to get the pulley off. And because we had to wait for that, we couldn't pull the top end of this off because I was going to actually start tearing this all down to get it ready. But uh, you need to basically have the compression here and the, the rear wheel lock so this stays tight. Otherwise, uh, you're stuck jamming things in there and you break things. Yeah. It happens. Let's get this up on the lift. Anytime that you're switching wheels on a bike, the one thing you're always gonna run into is axle spacers. Sometimes you gotta get creative. What's the move on setting a chain up for the first time? Because this is, you gotta build in, you know it's gonna stretch. Right, so. The way we always set it up, the way I learned to set it up as a kid, and the way that you know still holds true, is that you take your adjusters off all the way, push this axle as far forward as you could possibly get it, and then when you're going to cut the chain, you have to cut it in the right spot. Like the links have to end correctly where you can add a master link between it. You can't attach this to that. So at that point, we can't go any tighter, so we go one looser, get these to end together, and then we'll take this pin out, Put our master here, adjust the slack, call her a day. So now, as you can see, mm -hmm. so here they meet. You can put the master link here. Had we gone one more, then you're in between links. So, we have to go a little bit on the looser side. There she goes. And then this guy. Exactly. Well, from the back. Jeez. I mean, you know, unless you really want to. Unless you really want to make your life difficult. You gotta make sure it goes that way. <laughs> yeah. So, while these guys finish up the back of the bike, I'm gonna start on the top end of the engine, just getting this knocked out so we can get this cam cover off. Cause, gotta get the uh, tension off of the rockers before we pop this and you'll see why in a sec. All right, so, get on the heads. You ready? Yeah. Pop that. Get them out of there. S Take them off all in one. Give her the old wiggle wiggle. Look at that. Oh, those don't look bad. Wow, not bad at all. Not too shabby. Alright, now all we gotta do is get the clips out of this, slide the wrist pins out, pull the pistons off, and we'll be ready for the SNS kit. There it goes. 
In the 1200S, is there any difference to the internals over the... It's the heads. Just the heads? It's the heads. Okay. They have a different cam too, but uh, the pistons and everything are all the same. All right, so right now, Corey's taking the cam cover off. The hard way. Oh, there she goes. So is there anything to watch out for when you do this? Um, try not to let them fall out if you're not changing the cam so you don't have to retime them. But if you are, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So now that's out of the way. Oh, you just need here. So, get the old gasket out of the way. Okay, so on these, there's marks. So as Steve turns the motor over, they're going to move. Every two times this goes around, these go around once. So in order to get them to line up, sometimes you need to mess with them a little bit, but if he backs it up just a smidge. So right there you can see the line, the line, the line, the dot, 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 dot. Nice. But you can, so like so what I'm saying, so you can, it's possible to be 180 out, but it won't ever like work that way for them to all work. Dude. There's one, I mean, we'll, you have like a scribe or like a Sharpie or... Yeah, that's a good idea to mark yeah. so we know which bore they came out of. So when they reference the cams on these, it's one, two, three, four. Six. Number two is the one that the ignition sits on. That's the easiest way to remember it. One, two, three, four. One thing to notice when you take these out and when you go to put them back in, I always put the hole towards the outside of the motor. Um, there's gonna be a hole on one side, no hole on the other side. Holes, outside of the motor. When you're taking these out, is there anything to think about? Or? Uh, no, now that the lifters are out, if you didn't take the lifters out, they would fall in. Okay. But now that they're out, it's not that big of a deal. So number two is always going to be the one with multiple gears on it, because this contacts the pinion and this contacts the rest of the cams. And then this is going to be your lobe. So it'll have like the designation of what this is. This is an OEM one, so I don't know what that even stands for. Actually, these might not be. 15-2. So it'll have a number two. So that's number two. This is number one. 15-1, number three, 15-3, and number four, 15-4. So there they are. There's like the matching inner bushings, which all seem to be pretty nice. So what are you looking for on bushings? Just, just scoring. Like scoring, yeah, scoring. And you, I mean, honestly, you'd be able to tell based off of this a lot of the time too, if you notice a lot of scoring on here, it's kind of a telltale sign. But the brass, I mean, they're pretty resilient in these motors. Honestly, the time that you're gonna notice that they get messed up is if you blow your motor. Like the metal starts to go through things. If you have oil pump issues, you might notice it, they get hot. But yeah, as long as they're nice and smooth, should be good to go. So, we've got the top end disassembled. We've got the cams out. Um, I mean, this thing's basically ready for parts now, so we're just kind of in a waiting game. But we are gonna do one fancy thing here, and that is cut this cam cover. All of this is just kind of extra. So that is what it looks like without it. So Steve's gonna show us how he works his magic. So the ignition comes out of here. It's easier just to cut along here and then kind of dive out around it. So you've got this little nub for the wires to come out. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you can pretty much just follow along the case and just cut it off. And I usually just smooth out the edges and that's pretty much it. Hell yeah. Okay, so it's 2 a.m. This is where the bike stands now. We've got pretty much everything stripped off of it except for the front end, which we're gonna deal with in the next episode here. But we've got the engine torn down. We've got the new wheel and the chain drive on. We got everything, and then, dude, this new tank, this this looks much better. Oh yeah, and top it all off, Steve with the cam cover. On the next episode, we're gonna address this front end. We're gonna get this uh, powder coated black one on there. It's also a little bit shorter. Uh, and then once the kit comes, once the hooligan kit comes from SNS, uh, that was overnighted today, so once that gets here, we'll get that all back on, put the heads on, and just get to jamming, and then you guys are coming back tomorrow? Or... Back tomorrow. All right. I'm gonna wire this thing up. Hell yeah. Put shocks on. I also need to stop by Saddleman and get our tail section because we didn't do that today. So that will uh, that'll complete our look here. 
And then once we uh, once we get our Dunlops in, we can put those on. We'll uh, figure out a way we'll get this be the painted or powder coated. Dude, it'll be a bike. Stay tuned on the next episode. It's gonna get done. All right, so there you have it. Bikes torn down. We still need a name for this bike, so comment below. Let us know what you think it should be named. If you want to see this bike live in action, you can come out to the Born Free Stampede June 20th in City of Industry. Subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Let us know. You like motorcycle content on the channel? If not, don't say anything. <laughs>